Former Russian spy Sergei Zinov expressed his opinion about the massive shelling of Ukraine on August the 26th. As far as Moscow is concerned, we know that Ukraine has means that could fly there. To what extent are the strikes planned? I think that a simple strike on Moscow is not interesting. Of course, Ukraine does not strike any residential areas. If it does hit any residential buildings, it is simply because the Russians shoot down these drones and they fall where they fly, he said in an interview with Dasha Chaslivaya. An experienced intelligence officer called on Ukraine to respond to Putin's missile terror. In the Russian Federation, Ukraine would be interested in making some kind of symbolic strike on Lubyanka, on the Defense Ministry building, on Frunzenskaya embankment, something like that. I do not rule out that such a possibility may exist. We will watch because, of course, even what the Ukrainian armed forces did to Putin in the Kursk region is a huge blow to his reputation, to the reputation of the Russian Federation, and it is most likely preparing some kind of response. We remember that Putin did not respond to Prigozhin's mutiny right away either. First, he had to disarm the Wagners, he had to come up with something, and only two months later, Putin killed Prigozhin and Utkin. He is a man who is capable of preparing for a response for many weeks and then delivering his own blow, emphasized Sergei Zyanov. Recently, Ukraine has launched one of its largest drone attacks on Moscow as it presses on with a major incursion into Russia's Kursk region, Russian authorities said. This is one of the largest ever attempts to attack Moscow with drones, Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin said on the Telegram messaging app. Drone attacks on Moscow are rare. Ukraine's latest attempt to target the Russian capital appeared to be larger than an attack in May 2023 when at least eight drones were struck down. The barrage was part of a broader attack on Russia, with the Ministry of Defense saying its air defense units destroyed 45 Ukrainian drones in total last time. Kiev and other major cities in Ukraine are routinely targeted by Russian missiles and drones. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has argued that the aftermath of Ukraine's incursion into Russia shows that Kremlin warnings about red lines are exaggerated. Moscow has largely downplayed the attack. Leaders barely refer to it in public and describe their response as a counter-terrorism operation. The United States and Great Britain provided Ukraine with satellite images and intelligence about the Kursk region after the Ukrainian armed forces began their offensive in the region, the New York Times reported, citing American officials. As two sources explained to the publication, this information helped Ukrainian troops track the movement of Russian reinforcements that could attack the Ukrainian armed forces or cut off their possible retreat to Ukraine. Some sources note that as Ukraine expands its control over Western Russia, the risk of overloading the Ukrainian armed forces logistics chains and air defense systems increases. The transfer of additional forces to the Kursk region weakens Kiev's position along the front lines in eastern Ukraine, especially in the Donbass, where the Russian military is actively trying to advance. Washington is not sure that Ukraine will hold the captured territories in the long term. This is evidenced by the lack of trenches, minefields and defensive barriers that could protect the Ukrainian armed forces from counterattacks, New York Times sources say. A Pentagon representative, in turn, noted that the lack of defensive fortifications does not mean that they will abandon the holding of these territories, Kiev may be planning to strengthen its positions further on Russian territory in order to expand the buffer zone. Officials stress that the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region was carefully planned, but its success exceeded expectations. Ukraine took advantage of Moscow's slow reaction and is now acting more flexibly, the sources said. On August 23, the Washington Post reported that the U.S. presidential administration is discussing possible changes to the military aid package for Kiev so that it better meets the needs of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region. The Pentagon has already requested information from Ukraine about the necessary resources, but no decision has been made yet on adjusting the supplies. Possible supplies include armored vehicles and weapons that will help the Ukrainian armed forces strengthen their positions in the Russian region. 
One of the Washington Post sources emphasized that the U.S. does not have a full understanding of the goals of the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region, since Kiev does not disclose its plans. The Ukrainian armed forces launched an offensive on the Kursk region on the morning of August 6. At the moment, the Ukrainian army has taken control of about 1,300 square kilometers of Russian territory and at least 94 populated areas, and thousands of Russian soldiers have been captured. The invasion of Russian territory by a foreign army, the first since World War II, and the failure of the Russian Defense Ministry to stop the advance of the Ukrainian armed forces have shocked the Russian leadership and made Vladimir Putin nervous, sources from among current Kremlin government officials told the Moscow Times. According to one of them, the president has not been seen so gloomy since the fall of 2022, when the Russian army fled Kherson.